welcome to part two of the scripture application uh, discussion. We are going to be looking at scriptures that we commonly misuse. So join us as we discuss this. <laughs> So, I want us to make this a little bit practical, right? And I know, woo, me included, me misuse Bible, we buy a sana. So, we are going just to look at five verses, which I know most of us have misused for a very long time. And I'm going to start with our favorite verse. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah 29, verse 11. This I know we can quote all of us because for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, plans to give you a future and a hope, you know. So let's come to that verse. We all love using this verse, by the way. You know, when you're there, you're going through struggles and the first thing you remember, oh, I know the Lord has a good plan for me. How are we supposed to apply this scripture? And I know we had done this series when uh, at a time when you did uh, Jeremiah, so I think you will be the best person to look at this. Yeah. Yeah, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, not for evil, plans to give you a future and a hope. Um, uh, like I said, it's, it's important uh, to appreciate the author. This is Jeremiah. Uh, who is he writing to? He's writing to uh, the people of Judah. And uh, where are they? They are in Babylon, in exile. Why are they there? Because they have sinned against the Lord. So the Lord is chastening them. He's punishing them. And after appreciating all that background information, because that's where it begins, then that is what brings a new meaning to this line. And so Jeremiah is um, giving hope to a people who are hopeless, people who are in a foreign country. They're in exile at Babylon. They're in a far land. There are questions running in their minds. Uh, they are wondering whether the Lord, I mean, because the Lord had promised that he would bless them through their father Abraham in, in Genesis 12. So he's, they are wondering, uh, do these promises uh, still stand? Uh, can we still look forward to something great in the future? Because life is like getting worse uh, for us. Are we, are, just, are we just about to die? Uh, are we going to be extinct after this exile? Are we going to be finished by Nebuchadnezzar and his government? So that is where Jeremiah comes in. And he says, by the way, guys, life is hard for you, but God knows the plans that he has for you. And even before that scripture, literary context, Jeremiah actually encourages them and tells them, by the way, settle down here in, in exile. I mean, don't be in a hurry. If you're single, get married, by the way. Don't stay at, at Isaina and go there at the lockdown. <laughs> yeah, 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 but all Corona weddings, eh? very interesting. Yeah, yeah this, this will go down memory lane, yeah? So he says, if you're single, get married. If your daughter or son are seeing when they want to get married, allow them to marry. I mean, uh, work hard. Pray for the peace of Babylon because when you, are, when you are actually, when the nation is peaceful, you're also peaceful. So enjoy. You will actually be here for 70 years. And Jeremiah is saying here, they like uh, in the first 10 years, that's when he brings his message to them. When they are newly in Babylon, they are trying to settle down. And he tells them, by, by the way, guys, actually what you what you what your plans make them long have long term plans to be in babylon <laughs> don't be in a hurry to leave this place but then remember that god knows the plans that he has for you he has he has a hope he has a future he does not want to destroy you the promises of abraham as far as your nation is concerned still stand they are valid and you will be delivered and god will give you victory and uh, we it's wrong how this scripture is interpreted, but we could appreciate it by saying that it's not really wrong to, uh, to, to use this scripture as long as you are um, counting on God's sovereignty, like he knows all things. Maybe you would want to use a scripture like Romans 8, uh, 28. Yeah, for everything works for good for those that love the Lord. Yeah, so God is sovereign in all things. So... That is how we would want to uh, appreciate Jeremiah 29. Thank you, Rev. So, yes, I hope we now 
can apply Jeremiah 29:11 in a good way. And I liked what you said some time back, Rev, that um, for us, then we need to first ask ourselves, are we in Christ? Yeah. You know, so that because we know when we're in Christ, then he has actually promised us a future which is uh, life with him, eternity. So we True. shouldn't be afraid of anything. And I think it's also good to add that no matter how long those promises take, mm. you fulfilled, it's always good to wait. And it's, it's, it's important that we don't ignore how Hananiah and Nehemiah appeared. Mm. When you think about now the context, and actually Hananiah prophesies to them that uh, it would take them two years to come out of that situation. So it's always good to be patient in waiting upon the Lord. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe it's important to quickly mention that uh, it would be wrong for a person who does not know Christ. And I, th and I thank you for the point that you brought up. You cannot use this scripture if you are not, uh, if you are not a son, if you are not adopted into God's kingdom. Because here the scriptures are talking about a nation that has been chosen and that is Judah. So we fall in the category of Gentiles, people who uh, fall in the category of non-Jewish uh, non -Jewish generation, non-Jewish tribes. So, I mean, what plans does God have for us? So we need to ask ourselves that question. So, I mean, the plan that anybody, the, the plan that God has for anybody who does not know Christ is to be destroyed. So, I mean, I, I feel sad when I find people who are not even born again, who have nothing to do with church. They're like, God has good plans for me. <laughs> what plans? Yeah, those are plans for destruction. Yeah. So, um, so the nation of Judah can be taken as a block because all these people are people who, are, who have a promise and a portion in the covenant that was given to the nation. But now the covenant is for those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, so important to mention. So let's go to another verse, which we love. Oh, I've used this verse so many times. Matthew eighteen twenty, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. You know, George, Sunday at Tujui kutaenda aji kwa kwa service with, uh, with Corona, you know. And I know that the part of our will were to, and the encouragement will be where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am, you know. And is this verse meant to, yani, to, to siske me by a ju, what were Jatan out place to require to meet Ama? What is the real meaning? Absolutely no. And I think I have fallen victim of uh, abusing this scripture very many times. Same here, same here. And especially every time I used to appear to a district fellowship and people fail to come. And I encourage. I used to encourage myself with this scripture, where two or three are gathered. Uh, there he is in their midst. Even now, we are, <laughs> he's in our midst. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's actually you. You. It's interesting how it's preceded by another verse that we we abuse so often. Uh, that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. But it's important that we look at the context. And we will look at the context by looking at verse from verse 15. It introduces a very interesting uh, point there. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. So it's talking about two people who have issues. And, and, and the issue is, is, is sin here and brings in an, an aspect of reconciliation between those two brothers. And so it says that go to him and, and try to, to, to reconcile with him. But then verse 16, if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. They are still trying to resolve this issue that is there between these two guys. Yeah. They're trying to resolve these issues. Verse 17, if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. They are still trying to address this problem that is there between these two brothers. It has gone now to that extent. And you know, for example, in our church, we have structures. 
and it goes on verse 18. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth, binding means that now they have tried to resolve this issue and it seems they can't solve it amicably. Now they have to come up with a, with, with a conclusion. They have to deal with this once and for all. What do they do? After he fails to, to listen to them, to this one person, to the two witnesses, and now to the church, comes to the point of now binding him. And in our today's context, context we will normally use the word excommunication. Yeah, they, they now bind him. They agree that now he's not part of the fellowship. Now they bind him. And now the, the Bible continues to say that whatever it is that they now agree concerning now this brother who does not want to change his ways, whatever they agree here on earth, even in heaven, it is sealed. Now, where do you see the devil there? Because this is one of the scriptures people normally use to bind the devil. Eh? And to agree on things, especially when they are holding hands. <laughs> yes, so, and continues to say, that again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Still concerning this brother or the issue. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. He's talking about now the, 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 the discussion and the agreement that they have concerning this particular brother. Whatever it is that they agree, the Lord is always there to seal their agreement concerning this particular issue. Yes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so maybe that is a scripture one would use when, when dealing with conflict. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yes. Mm. And, and maybe I just want to quickly say it's unfortunate that we no longer use that mode, the biblical mode, when we are reconciling people. Yeah, and so uh, that would actually be a good way to manage conflict in the church and resolve issues. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's unfortunate. The Bible gives us, it's it's like a manual, I mean, to even carry out things in the in the worship, uh, in the fellowship uh, of believers. So, yeah, it's, it's a good uh, scripture to meditate upon. Yeah. Mm. Great. So let's look at another one. Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So, it's very common that if you visit a home, you will come across a mug or a clock or something that has the inscription, be still and know that I am God. Do we do justice to that verse by just taking a portion of it and we, we, we don't really like dwelling on the other second part of the verse? What, what do you think, Rev? Probably at all, kona kaki tukame andi kwa bistil. Yeah, thankfully, yeah, I'm wazi ona ile dairy ko kwa mfuko ime. Yeah, yeah, be still and know that I am God. Okay, now uh, this is one of those scriptures that is not uh, that you cannot easily point out the misinterpretation. Uh, because it's um, it wouldn't be really wrong to encourage someone by telling them, you know, be still and know that he is God. But uh, as 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 nice as good Bible believing Christians, we want to know uh, the background of every text of every line. Mm -hmm. uh, so here, the psalmist, as he sings this song, first of all, he's appreciating the security that comes from above over the city of Jerusalem, being because Judah is a chosen nation, so Jerusalem being the capital city is a cho chosen city. So this city that has gone through lots of challenges, many enemies wanting to destroy uh, Jerusalem, this city that has been under threat for a long time by different kinds of nations, pagan nations, this city is under the Lord's refuge. So this is basically what the psalmist is saying. So when he says, be still and know that I am God, he's saying, you know, just, just shut up. I mean, there is no argument here. Yeah, it's, be still does not mean, 
and ungoje <laughs> mungu yeah it's not about yeah. like staying and being idol yeah. it's actually uh, it's actually trying to tell you don't get into any argument because god is in control he's in charge his security is sufficient so this city is under god and you can see how the bible talks about uh, i mean the same chapter verse 4 there is a river whose streams make glad the city of god so it's it's jerusalem that the bible is talking about the holy habitation of the most high because a temple is in jerusalem and so god dwells in that temple god is in the midst of her she shall not be moved god will help her when morning dawns so this is a nation under god's security and charge so those of us who are christians uh, we know that we are under god's uh, charge he's the one who watches over us we can also be still like we do not have to worry about uh, what is attacking us we should not worry about uh, uh, the assurance of our deliverance or the assurance of our salvation because it is god who watches over us so we can actually be still and not even want to be in charge of ourselves we should not get into any argument god is in charge yeah so be still gladwell and know that he is god <laughs> amen amen and he will be exalted you know i'll be still he's sovereign whatever is happening it's for his glory yes. amen amen hey this one hey yawa okay <laughs> philippians 4:13 yes. judge yes. i can do all things <laughs> through him who strengthens me yes. you know at kujichocha uh, eh okay. Nenda kwa field ya bake hivi leo ni nyinyi mnacheza we can do all things you know Actually he looks like he can do all things <laughs> <laughs> Yes indeed I can through uh, Christ who strengthens me mm, yes, it's, it's, it's always good to look at this verse uh, by also appreciating the the struggles and the hardships and the difficulties that Paul faced when he was doing ministry and throughout all the letters that Paul writes that comes out very clearly and in this particular verse the context this verse especially when you read from verse 10 Paul is saying that he rejoices greatly in the Lord at length and in verse 11 he says that now that I am speaking of being in need this particular context talked about need because there are times when he 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 is really struggling there are, there are things that he he needs sometimes he's in prison and 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 he needs comfort sometimes he covets for the for the prayers of 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 his of the brethren he is going through and this particular context addresses the the, the, the needs that he he has and that in every circumstance I have learned the secret of facing plenty hunger abundance and need so those are some of the struggles that he faces in ministry and when addressing this church in Philippi he highlights some of the challenges that he faces and he says continues down to verse 13 that irrespective of those circumstances irrespective of those needs that he has that that are sometimes very pressing that are sometimes very that are very painful to to experience he encourages himself that even though i have these issues i can still continue with the task that lord the lord has has committed into my hands and that is that is where now he comes and says i can do all things i can still do ministry i can still continue with 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 what i do as far as ministry is concerned i can still serve the lord even in such pain and that is where now he comes in and says i can do all things through christ again through christ he depends on a strength that is higher than him he does not depend on uh, on, on on self motivation he totally fully commits himself and submits himself to the authority of Jesus Christ and by doing that he receives a lot of strength from god yes yeah so this is not about being an engineer a doctor yes. <laughs> uh, a businessman uh, a pilot uh, at the same time yes. and a sports guy yeah it's not about yeah it's about you know what i can contain because of the, of the grace of god upon me yeah through christ's strength 
it's interesting because when things get tough in the world, you know, we're taking a break. Yeah. But I, I don't think there's a break when it comes to a walk of faith. Because anyway, Christ is our enabler. So it was if you come to say, hey, we can do all things. Exactly. Exactly. So I would like to dwell on the last one. I would, I would like to pick it from here. Now we all know that water is H2O. Even if today I was to wake up and say, I see H2O, ni H2 something, uh, everyone will tell me when I'm jinga. But now when it comes to things that have to do with moral issues, like if today I say pornography is wrong, someone will be like, hey, don't judge me. Who are you to judge? The Bible says in Matthew 7, 1, judge not that you may not be judged. Do we really? use that verse in the right context when we don't want to be told uh, when, when something is wrong, like, yeah. <laughs> Please don't judge me uh, from my answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is another, I don't know whether to call it a sad, this is one of those things that if they were implemented in church like what we were talking about Matthew 18 because this do not judge thing is so is so humanistic it is so worldly nothing to do with the scriptures it is just a, a way of picking up a line and you know justifying yourself when you holy sana when you holy dress now the kind of judgment that Christ is talking about here on the Sermon on the Mount, and we will get here uh, through our uh, our series. He's he's um, discouraging his disciples from uh, self righteous kind of judgment, like feeling like you're holier than thou, like portraying uh, that uh, you know what you know the sins that you're committing. So I'm actually shocked that you're still there. Anybody una struggle not to them, it will go to dog or at his Yes, at this Jew, Kuvuta Sigara. Me, I, me, like the tax collector who said, that kind of judgment is, is harmful. It's not biblical. That does not tell us to shun all forms of judgment. There is judgment that is actually advised and prescribed by the Bible so that the church can stay strong, so that the fellowship of believers can be enhanced. So there's a judgment that is very important. And uh, there are many examples. And, and maybe some of you even share some. First Corinthians 5. The Corinthian church is dealing with a, a guy who has been uh, caught, uh, punched down, in, uh, I mean, doing sexual immorality. I mean, performing the sin of, uh, committing the sin of sexual immorality. And so Paul is so angry. And he says, you know, expel that brother. Do away with him. Yeah, let him be judged. And actually in the following, in the following chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, Paul actually discourages the Christians from suing one another, like taking each other to, uh, to, to, I mean, to government, yeah, to, uh, to legal offices and all that. He says, you guys, you have the capacity to actually judge one another. You can sit down and actually make a verdict and agree how you can discipline a brother. Uh, so so there, is, there needs to be people who you, you need to keep checking one another. So if, if I find um, uh, George uh, struggling with a certain issue, um, I'll, I'll go to him and, and I'll say, um, I think, uh, and, and I'll go to him knowing that I'm also a sinner depending on God's grace. I'm not going to him telling him, dude, maze, maze, yo, yo ni nasari stuff, mini ko campus. Eh? I'll go to him and tell him, I mean, I'll go with a, with a lot of grace and gentleness and mercy and say, you know, someone told me, or, or maybe I saw you at a corner somewhere, na kwa hiyo kono uluku mesimama, nilikono na moshi na panda ju, na nilikono na juyo moshi si makaratasi ziliko zinachomo hapo. I know there was no, nobody's house burning. There's something you are smoking. And I'm just concerned about you, brother. So that's, that's brotherly love. Do you know what people do nowadays? I find you have an issue. So because I do not want to judge, yeah, I go and begin to, 
Yeah. Yeah, you go and begin to talk about Back them. Yeah. Yeah. Moshene. Ati? Moshene. Eh, Moshene. Yeah, exactly. Mneno unaanza kusema, "Oh, you need to pray for, you know, Sister Gladwell." Oh, I'm, I really have a burden for that sister. You know, of late, she's been having this kind of weird behavior. And yet I have not gone to Gladwell first. And Matthew 18 actually shows us how we should start. That is now true love. Sio kuogopa mtu huko alafu naenda kumsengenya huko kando. It is biblical to deal with your issues and to judge one another, not in the sense of declaring a sentence per se and saying, now you go to hell, you are totally damned. We don't have that power. Only God has that power. But we can actually, you know, even expel someone in the church, decide to expel someone, hoping that the Spirit of God will be at work within him and maybe in a short while, they will be coming back to us. So how we need to be encouraged to, to judge one another. Yeah, we need to actually inculcate, encourage that culture. Yeah, because history, don't judge me, is making people now live in a very carnal behavior. And because they're not being challenged by anyone, some of them are trapped, they're addicted, and some of them are crying help. But because everybody is fearing them, drugs. And yet nobody, no brother, no brother in the whole church. Hakuna youth. Alienda kambia. Uyo brother, maze. I think we need to pray with you so you can get out of this issue. Yeah. So that kind of judgment is healthy. And actually Paul encourages us in Second Timothy 4 to, to be ready in and out of season to reprove, rebuke, exalt with complete patience and teaching. Now what level say? Yeah. So we are not only called in the greatest in the great commission to make disciples, but also help each other in actually waging war against sin. So let's not end it at tumehubiri, uh, but let's help one another, especially us as young people. You know, to kind struggles. Yes, they are real, and sin is real. But then, by keeping quiet or just kuenda when you tumesema brother to Bombay, we may not really be helping them. Yes, it's good to pray for them, but let's also be one another's keeper, brother, sister keeper. Yeah. So we have come almost to the end of our discussion today. I, I think we should do uh, more on this because I, sure. I, I know we would love probably at a Mikuda scripture I misinterpret in, in, in a very big way. And I know with the help of the Holy Spirit and also with these discussions, we'll surely be able to learn more and be able to do things better. So maybe I would like you to share your parting shots as, as we can. George, I'm ready. So let's start with George. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I need to end by saying that God is not a puzzle. He is a God we can understand. He is a God we can relate with. And one of the ways, one of the best ways through which we can relate to God, actually one of the best ways through which God speaks to us on a daily basis is through scripture. I pray that we would all embrace this word. I pray that we would make it part of our daily program. I pray that we would uh, meditate upon it day and night. Amen. Thank you. Second Timothy 2.15 Do your best to present yourself to God as an approved, as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. You know, do your best. I would encourage uh, the young people to labor in studying the word of God. It is what, it is the only thing that God gave us that transforms us. So how I hope that uh, someone can be encouraged, someone who has lost touch with the Bible, try do like two chapters in a day or if you if you are that if you are that uh, if you are such a poor reader do at least a chapter a day you can start with the book of john that helps us understand the gospel in a simple way and the centrality of christ read a chapter a day meditate upon it uh, even if you don't have a commentary yet or a big bible you know just read a chapter and you know think about it actually read it twice you know ask the lord what is it that you would want me to learn from this 
take a pencil or a pen, you know, underline the parts that you feel like the Holy Spirit is, you know, really edifying you through. Um, make some notes on your Bible. Your Bible shouldn't be clean, by the way. Uh, it should be old and uh, with a lot of writings. <laughs> That's if you don't have a separate notebook. So read the Word of God. It sanctifies, it transforms us. Amen. Mm. So read your Bible. Meditate. Memorize. You know, this is the life's manual. You can up a lecture an electronic device, man. It will just crash. And if you don't follow the manual that God gave us, then uta crash be away. And uh Bible tells us in John three eighteen that anyone who believes is not condemned, but he who does not believe has already been condemned. Mm. So may the Lord help us as we seek to apply God's word. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like was quickly. Yeah. yeah. So um, maybe we can end with a word of prayer. Rev, you can um, pray for us even as we seek to apply the word of God in okay. a more correct way. Okay. Yeah. Let's pray. Oh, dear Lord, we want to thank you for uh, giving us uh, this opportunity of uh, uh, discussing and uh, uh, talking about uh, the deeper issues of life and uh, we thank you for the topic of today about uh, interpreting and applying scripture and Lord we know that uh, as much as we are here we may not be the most qualified people to talk about uh, this topic and uh, we lack in so many ways we lack wisdom and knowledge and so we how we pray that Lord you would uh, make complete uh, our attempt uh, to edify the body of Christ. And so, Lord, we pray that um, you would uh, continue to encourage us and help us uh, to honor uh, the word that you gave us, the word that transforms us, uh, the word that draws us toward you, the word that gives us hope that goes beyond death. And so, Lord, we pray that this word will be something that we will love, something that we will love um, in a way that is uh, bigger than, than we love the things of the world. And so, Lord, we also want to pray for the young people who are watching us and even others who are watching us. Uh, we pray that, Lord, you would uh, encourage them also uh, to begin to read the scriptures and to hunger to know you uh, through your word. May you guide us. May you be with us. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So God bless you. See you next time. Thanks for joining us. Oh, 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 oh